Hi everyone, welcome to Talent Center Stage. My name is Cynthia Obiwande and I'm your host. On this show, we get to bring you amazing African talent. And with me on this episode is an artist who has won series of awards for his incredible and fascinating artworks. He is an ambassador for the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and has been a huge source of inspiration to many youth in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Do stay with me, we'll get to meet him right after the break. Welcome back to Talent Center Stage. With me on this episode is Cookie Ibim. You're welcome to the show, Cookie. Thank you very much. All right, let's um, get started with you telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, um, my name is Ibim Cookie. And I'm from an island community, Opubu, River State here. Mm -hmm. And I'm a graduate of architecture, University of Nigeria and Suka. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a multi award winning artist. Mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm an art ambassador to Ministry of Culture and Tourism. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm wondering, have you always been an artist or you developed uh, that passion at a certain age in your life? <laughs> well, there's a saying that everyone is an artist. <laughs> it just depends on who continues being an artist. Because, oh, yeah, from your handwriting, you already started drawing. So, that's it. But I've always been an artist. But I had passion for art. I actually wanted to play football, but <laughs> <laughs> it never came. So, I started doing artworks. Okay. So, was it like uh, this uh, parent thing came in between, like, no, I'm going to be an artist. I want my son to be a medical doctor or an engineer. So, what really happened? It always comes in. We're Africans. <laughs> we're Africans. I, I can remember when I was about writing for Jam. Um, I told my mom I wanted to do fine and applied arts. And her reply was, so you want to graduate, open your shop and write by your <laughs> So, okay. but then the thing is, I had to go for a course I had drawing, but wasn't really fine and applied. That's something with a little bit of prestige according to the African mentality. So, okay. so what was that course? Architecture. Mm -hmm. That's great. Alright, so tell us, how did you start making arts? Okay, um, I started portrait drawing in 2014, 2015, there about, but I wasn't really doing portraiture per se, I just thought I was drawing objects and things. So um, I went online and I saw some portrait jobs and then I, I was attracted to the features of the human face, so I decided mm -hmm. to major in portrait arts. So what really made you uh, become a full-time artist? Well, I was just doing one or two drawings, client drawings, and people were like, ah, this thing looks like me, and they'll give you some more, <laughs> they'll give you some more thing. But then, um, I think when I was in 200 level, that was around 20, if I can remember, 2016, mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine posted my work on Naira Land, it's a forum, mm -hmm. yeah, it has huge traffic in Nigeria, yeah, so... The day it came out, it had about 70,000 views or so. Really? So I trended that period, like, literally, you know the way blogging works, this person post, another person take. Mm. So you had the Linda IKG, Bella Ninja, and the rest. Wow. So then I got my first exhibition in South Africa. Wow. It was Festival of Arts and Culture, Johannesburg. Uh, okay. So I went for it, and then I came back. Then I did some in Lagos and within Nigeria and everything. Then I went to Niger Republic. Okay. And then I did one. According, I had a relation who linked me with someone in UK, Bristol. Mm -hmm. So I did it and then I came back and then since then I just say, okay, now here we die. So you, you, you decided to die in art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's not art, it's not <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I still do architecture on the sideline though, but like art is my main host. That's what I'm known for. Alright, so is there really uh, any of your artworks that you're most proud of? Well, I'm proud of anyone I'm doing currently because the thing with art is you improve with time. So, as you grow, your artwork becomes better. If I don't artwork today, the one I'll do maybe one month from now will be better than the one I just did today. So, you just have to connect with every artwork so the audience can connect with it. So. Okay, so there's no one that you're like, you have this sentimental attachment to? I uh, just have one that I felt like helped me. There we go, to, I'm sure you have uh, so that, that, that. that. And then I did that. I had, um, the, had, the title was Destitute. It had a child eating Nero's biscuits. Yeah. It was a mixed media. So the child, the drew, it was a pencil drawing, and the Nero's biscuit was colored. So I um, actually, UNICEF saw it. So they used it for one campaign like that for this poverty elevation program. So I think that's my, it's not like it's my favorite, but it's one of my highlights. Wow, that's great. All right, that's fine. Uh, we'll get to see Cookie's work 
right after the break. This artwork is really, really beautiful. I love it. But what does it portray? Okay, um, the title of the artwork is Citizen, mm -hmm. and it shows um, an individual with a really dark hoodie covering himself. And then I titled the artwork Citizen because it clearly represents us in Nigeria here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, like, Nigeria <laughs> is the only country where no one, no one struggles to be a citizen oh. because we don't have any benefits of being a citizen. Everything is partly done by ourselves. We provide water by ourselves, electricity is generated, you provide it by yourself. You buy landed properties, there is no mortgage system. So you do literally everything. Transport systems are owned by individuals who give cars on higher purchase. So you do everything yourself. So there's really no struggle or anything that makes you say, okay, yes, I want to be a citizen of this place. So that really explains that. Is that really the case? Yes. Okay. Fine. So, tell me, what's your most uh, important art tool? Pencil. Pencil? Yeah. Is it just pencil work that you do or you do painting as well? No, I do pencil. I specialize in pencil. Okay. Alright. So, who inspires you? Um, there's a Nigerian based in the UK, Kelvin Okafo. I feel like if you're an artist generally into this genre of art called hyperrealism, which I do, he inspires everyone. His drawings are really, really, really amazing. Mm. What kind of drawings are they? Do? Same type of art I do. Hyperrealism, just that he's, he's on a whole different level altogether. He has put in, I think he's in his thirties or so. He has put in so much work in his work, and it gives me a lot of international recognition. Like thirty years in artwork. No, like okay, his, age yeah, his, his like thirties. Okay. okay. Um, where do you think Nigeria is? Uh, with art and where do you think it should be? Well, for now, the art scene in Nigeria is struggling because, first of all, art is considered a luxury in Nigeria and not a valuable possession. So, um, they have a pigeon saying, you suppose don't chop first before you buy luxury. <laughs> so, for the, for, okay. yeah, we're in a country where you have 8 million of our population living below $2 a day, yeah. art is really a luxury. It's not something to say, okay, yeah, you want to buy and keep for possession purposes. You get, but hopefully we are advancing, especially Lagos. Okay, yeah, quite advancing. We are having as galleries day in day out. Although in Portaco we don't really have one yet because I know even our um, museum, a national art gallery, at the Secretariat is not really functioning. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we are getting there because we have the Society of Nigerian Artists here in Portaco, which I'm a member of, and we do an exhibition yearly. I think October every year in Hotel Presidential. So gradually we are getting to that level, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, with the station of the invention, you have some challenges that you face as an artist. Definitely. Um, first challenge is clients. Clients? Yeah. Tell you, me more. People, people feel like your, the fact that your work is photographic and stuff, so you're perfect. So most times, <laughs> yeah, most times people just give, someone will give you a picture, a particular image to reproduce, and like the person knows that, yeah, I'm not seeing anything. He's like, ah, you're the artist now, you can do this. Secondly, it's pricing. Like I said, art is not really valuable here in Nigeria. You get, um, we normally charge artworks per sizes, but then people will tell you, ah, why pay so much for this work when I can just take a picture and enlarge it? But then they forget that art is creativity. I cannot replicate the same image exactly the same way, even if I do it 10 times. You get, and then another challenge is material. We don't produce anything in Nigeria here. Pencils, erasers, we don't produce, we import everything. So most of the materials are gotten from AliExpress, the Chinese online store. Mm, yeah. So nice. then you have to pay for shipping and everything to come to Nigeria. Yeah. So by the time you consider that, and our frames, most of them are foreign too. So the person you're even going to give to frame the work set, we're going to tell you the same thing. So it's just difficult to grasp everything in one bit. But then I'm just wondering, if uh, you have a union or you have an association, the association should be doing something about that or they're just like adamant about the situation well when you say association it depends there are different types of associations no you said you're, you're not <laughs> yes. one of yes. the arts yes yes when i mean different types of association we have government and non-governmental this is a non-governmental association oh. so they're also looking for sponsorship from different sectors to be able to put into the association to make the association grow. so 
So there's there's so much they can do and there's so less they can do too. So do you have like a price tag to your artwork as an association since uh No. Everyone everyone does the individual the association is like like a gathering, it's like um a guy just like ASU. Oh. Every lecturer has their own salary depending on their level and everybody is doing their own thing and working at their own pace where everyone comes together mm. to have let's say a discussion on how to grow that particular sector which is art. Interesting. Quite some challenging work. Alright, so what do you have to tell our audience and upcoming artists? I want to come here to just sound very Don't discourage them. <laughs> no, no, everybody will not come here to even me. <laughs> yeah, you, but, uh, you know, you've, you've won series of awards already, and I know there are some persons that their dreams is just, you know, let me just get one award. So I know what I mean when I said mm. upcoming artists. In fact, you're out of that category. When you get that one award, you become, <laughs> uh, you, you, you manage your internship. When you get that one thing, you want more. Yeah. So, but the thing is, um, I've come to understand something which. I walk back because when I was starting, I kept on looking at people's work and I, I'm always like, ah, when will I get to this level? When will I get to this level? Mm-hmm. Then when I got to that level, I'll be like, ah, I'll not look fine on that person. I'll be like, when will I get to this level too? So the thing is, we need to understand something in life. Life is a relay race. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their own track. Everybody's running. Everybody gets to the finish line. Walk at your own pace. You understand? It's not the bare of roads. There's nothing that's too difficult or too easy. You understand? Yeah. Everybody has their own challenges. And then just what you see on social media. Social media people post their success, nobody posts their failures. Exactly. Yes. So you just work on your craft, develop on your own pace, mind your business and chase your dreams. Permit me to digress a, a little. You know, okay. when it is just now that I spoke about social media, I remember the depression issue which has been trending. Mm-hmm. Well, I say trending. Trending might be the wrong word. Which uh, we've been experiencing currently in Nigeria. And I'm wondering if um, you think there's a contributing factor to uh, social media, social media has a contributing factor to depression, being that people post their successes and not their failures. Yes, um, social media makes everyone feel like everybody's bawling, mm. and you are not bawling. Yes, <laughs> just understand. But then we need to understand that social people want to post what they want you to see. You get. I, 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 there are certain people I see on social media, and you just go to someone's page, and all his pictures are in hotels, mm. and he's wearing designers Gucci, Fendi, and yet you can't check his source of income. Yeah, you get. Don't get me wrong, there are people living the life and enjoying sure. it and making it, yes, you understand? Yes. But then, don't allow anybody pressure you into doing something wrong. Mm. You get So, the reason why we have a lot of depression and people committing suicide these days, because everybody wants to, they want fast, fast money. You want to get to this position very fast. You want to get to this place very fast. You want to strive first class very fast. But things are not like that. Life is a step. When you miss one step, you come back and start from the beginning again. That's just the way it is. So, it's better you work while you're in your youth. And then gradually you progress so you, until you get to a level where you can comfortably afford those things. Okay, quickly. So for our audience and people that would like to reach you, how okay. do they get across to you? Um, you can check me out on Facebook at Ibim Cookie, Instagram Cookie Ibim, Twitter Cookie One Eighty, then YouTube Ibim Cookie. Or you can just Google Ibim Cookie and you see all the information you need. Okay, Cookie was really really nice having you on this episode. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. If you're watching us on social media, I'd like you to follow our page, subscribe to our channel, like, share, and possibly tag a friend who should see this episode. Until we meet on yet another episode, I remain yours truly, Cynthia Obi-Wan.